Well, it's uh, it's good to be together today. It's good to, uh, it's good to worship with you guys. You guys sound amazing. Thank you, song leaders, for uh, leading us in worship, and thank you for everyone that's uh, played a part. The communion, the contribution. Um, it's great to be together as a family today. Um, if you guys could turn to Ephesians chapter two, we're gonna get into our lesson. Come on, bro. The title of the lesson today is "Love: The Most Excellent Way." Oh, wow. yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. Uh, you know, we just had Valentine's Day uh, on fr- on Friday. Uh, Kareem said, "This is the way." Isn't that? That's like uh, that's like a Jedi mind trick right there. Uh, but love, the most excellent way. Uh, you know, Friday was Valentine's Day, and uh, you know, Valentine's is, it's an interesting day. It's the one day a year uh, where people go out go out of their way. Uh, to buy cards and flowers and chocolate all in an attempt to say and express their love and to say, I love you. Uh, it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting phenomenon. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had to look up some statistics on Valentine's Day uh, since we just uh, celebrated this on Friday. But I was kind of uh, surprised, to say the least, some of the Valentine's Day Statistics. We spend, believe it or not, twenty billion dollars on this day. That's a lot of chocolate. Roses. That's a lot of flowers. Still roses. Um, twenty billion dollars. There, there are a hundred and eighty million cards that were written on Friday. There were two hundred and twenty-four million roses given. And get this, 58 million pounds of chocolate that was bought and consumed on Friday. 58 million pounds. That's just not healthy. Um, And all of that was an attempt to say, I love you. And I say an attempt because really, as a society, we don't know how to love. We don't know how to forgive each other. We don't know how to connect. I mean, you just, you just turn on the news for a minute and you get the picture. Um, and there's a reason why we don't know how to love. And it's because as a society, on, on the whole, we don't really go to the source of love. We don't learn from and obey the one who invented love. The Bible says in 1 John 4 that God is love. And that love comes from God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says that he teaches his people how to love. And I'm thankful for that one, let me tell you. If there's one thing that I have, I can say has been a, a, a lifelong pursuit, especially since I became a Christian 22 years ago, and I'll say I, I, came, I became especially aware of how not loving I can be when I got married 19 years ago. Um, if there's one thing that I pursue, it's learning how to be a more loving man. Um, and the Bible says God's going to teach you. Like, like he will show you because he is love. Um, you know, and as disciples, as Christians, the single most powerful factor, right, in, in us bringing the gospel to a lost world, it, 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 it matters more than how much knowledge you have. It matters even more than how much faith that you have. But how loving are you? Mm. How much love do you have? Um, Because through our love as God's people, people can see whether or not you're a real Christian or not. Mm. Whether or not you're a true disciple. Uh, Through our love, the Bible actually teaches that people can actually see God Mm. who's invisible. But they can see God through our love for each other. You know, on Friday, we... uh, we had a campus devotional. It was a Valentine's themed campus devotional. And they had all the, they had some of those 58 million pounds of chocolate there. Um, and cream consumed probably most of it. Um, but they, uh, but they, uh, they, they celebrated Valentine's. And one of the things they did is they watched the movie together um, that's called Warm, Warm Bodies. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this, but there's like a zombie phenomenon, you know, that's going on in our society. Everybody loves zombie movies. And uh, this one's a little different, though, than your typical zombie movie. And the movie starts off and you got this guy. They just call his name is R. Right. That's that's his name, R. And he's a zombie. And you hear the movies from his perspective. 
So you hear the thoughts that he's having. He's like just kind of going through life, you know, and he's talking about how he just wanders around and looks for people to, to, to eat. And, 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 uh, and he can't communicate with other zombies. They kind of gr- they grunt at one another. And, he's, and he actually, you hear his thoughts as he talks about that. It's kind of funny. But uh, they follow this guy. It's the same old routine. But the, the premise of the movie uh, is that he, he, he interacts with humans, okay? Um, and then he, he kind of, he, he, he saves this girl and he, she's with him. And the whole movie's based around um, he begins to feel again right yeah. he falls in love with falls in love with this with this girl and as she starts to treat him more she starts to trust him more and and talk to him and just that love and just that interaction at one point his heart starts to beat again yeah. and he starts to feel again and the whole movie is that progression of of him starting to love and starting to feel again literally love is the thing that takes him from being a zombie to human again yeah. wow. And I thought, you know, that's a very, that's very powerful. Uh, because um, you look around the world today, and I've, most of you have probably seen the movie that uh, I've, I've spoke about before, but The Sixth Sense. Oh, yeah. And that movie, the, 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 the kid, you know, he's got this, this famous saying, and it's, I see dead people. And I don't know about you, but when I walk around, I see dead people today. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're in a church or just walking around and watching people. Just go to the mall. Yeah. And you see people, zombies, yeah. just walking around. We're, try, we're, we're tr- trying to consume and have the next best thing. We're living our lives. And we're, and we're in the, a world void of love, really. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, here's the scripture. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, on, it says, As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins. In which you used to live. So he says, you were dead, but you were still alive. Mm -hmm. He says, you were dead in your sins. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Mm -hmm. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us god who is who is rich in mercy made us alive with christ even when we were dead in our transgressions Amen. and he says you are actually dead in your sin and god made you alive you were the the walking dead wow. Yeah. Wow. come on bro wow and, you know, I, I believe with all my heart that, you know, there's a seat, there's a world full of billions of people that are spiritual zombies. Mm. The walking, literally the, the walking dead. And it's the very, just as the movie that we watched on Friday, the very thing that's going to bring people back to life mm. is love. Yeah. Mm. Come on, bro. Come on. And this is what the world needs the most yes. yeah. is love. They don't need more chocolate. They don't need more cards and candy hearts. Mm. What the world needs most is love. Amen. To love and to be loved. You know, if you think about it, we are we're messed up. Mm-hmm. We are. Uh, we're, we're broken. Um, as, as individuals, I don't know about you, but we have a hard time yeah. loving others. Yeah. And we have a hard time allowing ourselves to be loved. And accepting it. And as a society, we have a very distorted view. And there's a lot of lies that are told us on, on what it really means to love and what love is. And so we need some help. Yeah. Come on, bro. Help us out. So go to first John chapter four. Let's go, bro. Let's go. We need to look at the scriptures because the Bible says God is love. So if you want to know how to love, you gotta look at the example that's given us. And uh, I, I'm thankful that God has a roadmap to love. Because I'd be lost individual. But he tells us exactly what love is. And it's more than a feeling. It's more than a feeling. It's, it, it's more than you think. First John chapter 4, we'll begin here. And we'll talk about the most excellent way. On, the way of love. First John chapter 4. Is everybody there? Yep. Verse 7. The Bible says, Dear friends, let us love each other. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God 
and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. Let me just read that again. Verse 8. He says, whoever does not love does not know God. That's, That's a convicting passage right there. He says, if you don't love, you don't even know God. Wow. And so for all of us, man, we've got to learn how to love. Wow. And it says here that love, love comes from God. It's something that God will teach you. And if you know God, then you're going to become a loving person. And uh, I think often we mistakenly think that being loving, oh, that's just, a, that's not my personality. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm an introvert, you know. I just, I'm just not very loving. Yeah. I, you know. <laughs> if you're busy, I'm an introvert, right? And, and I, I've tried to use that in my marriage, <laughs> honey. This is not my personality. I'm not very expressive in my love. She's like, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. That does not work like that. <laughs> yeah, you tell. She's told me, <laughs> and it's so. God has given me the perfect woman because, because it it it. it, it it forces me to be more like God. It's, yeah. Julie is the one that's going to help me get to heaven. Um, because it's not an option for me to say, I'm just not a loving person. I'm not good at expressing. No, you better get good at it. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if, if being loving or express, expressive, if it comes easy for you or it doesn't. Um, you, don't get a, you don't get a pass on this one. Yeah. It's not, it's not like a gift. It's not like a, a talent that some people have. And some, no, he says, if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to be loving. Wow. If you're not loving, then you don't know God. If wow. you're not loving, you're not a Christian. That's how serious God is about this. Wow. He's like, I am love and my people will be loving. Amen. Amen. Um, in Galatians 5, 6, the Bible says the only thing that counts. You know, whenever the Bible says that, <laughs> you, you might want to listen. Yeah. He says the only thing that counts is your faith expressing itself through love. Yeah. And I think, man, he, there's, there's many ways we can express our faith, right? We can go out, we can share it with thousands of people, which is a good thing to do. But he says here, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. I Meaning if you try to express your faith and your vast knowledge of the scriptures in any other way, except for being loving, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Wow. He says the only thing that counts is expressing itself through love. Um, and I think learning to be loving, it's got to become a lifelong pursuit. You'll never perfect it. Yeah. And God's always going to put you in situations where you've got to exercise being loving. Amen. And you're going to learn. Let's keep reading verse 9. What else does he say about love? It says here, it says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God has has so loved us, then we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, then God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. You know, I think we have such a hard time on being loving. God says, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to help you out. In fact, I'm going to give you the perfect example of love. And I'm going to send Jesus to the earth. And he's going to be someone that you can follow his example and imitate him. And he gives us that example. That's discipleship 101. You just, you strive to live like Jesus Christ. You look at, you know, a great Bible study. Look at all the ways that Jesus was loving. And all of his interactions with people. He was hard line. Like, him being loving did, didn't mean he was easy on sin or he didn't have, like, convictions. Mm-hmm. Jesus had deep convictions, but he was very loving. Yeah. He cared for people. Yeah. Um, and he says, I'm going to send you my son, the perfect example. And it says here in verse 12, it says, no one has actually seen God. But if we love each other, the Bible says that God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. You know, what's awesome about that is that we... Even though none of us have ever seen God, we are able, in a sense, to see God when we love each other. That's awesome. Uh, Yeah, Yeah. that you can you can see the heart of God when you love each other. That's that's how God becomes real Mm -hmm. for people Mm -hmm. and becomes visible. You know, I uh, 
I was reached out to 23 years ago. Wow. Come on, bro. Um, long time. I, I've been a Christian for 22 years. On, yeah, let's go. And uh, when I was reached out to, I literally felt like that scripture in Ephesians 2, the walking dead. Mm. I was hopeless. I was purposeless. I felt dead in my sin. I felt like I had no hope. And God reached out to me at just the right time. He put the right people mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. And uh, they shared their faith with me. But more than that, they shared, as 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, they shared their life with me. Yeah. And it was my, it was my first, um, I can say in my life, it was the first time I ever saw real Christianity. Mm-hmm. Real people actually living it out. That were willing to teach me, but also provide an example for me. And I remember they, uh, they studied the Bible with me, and that impacted me a lot. But more than the Bible study, I got to go to their home. And I remember what I saw when I went to their home. And it was a, kind of a crazy thing. I, had, uh, I was the walking dead, as I shared. And I was living my life in San Francisco. And I was so depressed. I had just gotten out of the military. I had a good job. I had money. I had an apartment in San Francisco. And, and it was just not easy to do nowadays. Um, and, but I was depressed. I was going out, I was partying every weekend, and I was getting more and more sad, I was more fed up with my life, and I had no hope. And it was at that moment God reached out to me, and he began to, to give me hope. Mm. And I remember these guys, I'd given my two weeks notice at my job, and I'd given my two weeks notice at my apartment, and they did a Bible study with me that, that changed my life forever. It was called yeah. Discipleship. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're visiting today, we still do this Bible study. Yeah. If, yeah. if you would like to know more in depth what this study means, discipleship, we would love to share it with you. Yeah. But it really, it details what it means to be a true Christian. Yeah. And it opened up my eyes. I was like, yes, I, I've, been, I've been wanting to, to I've, this is what I've been longing for. Like, what is my purpose, right? And so in a 45-minute time, it was, the scriptures revealed that to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the end of that study, these guys, they, 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 they asked me, do you want to be a disciple? Or, do you want to give up everything and follow Jesus? I'm like, yes. Little did I know what would, what would come next. <laughs> uh, yes, I do. And they said, okay, we have a challenge for you. I, I, I know that you're set to move in two weeks and go back home. But we want to challenge you to stay here in San Francisco. Mm, yeah. Don't move. And I'm like, but I quit my job. I don't have a place to stay. That's okay. You can move in with these guys. These guys will help you. These guys will take care of you. I'm like, but they don't even know me really. Yeah. You, guys are, you guys don't even know me. And you're willing to not just study the Bible with me, but you're going to bring me into your home. You're going to give me food. You're going to give me a place to live. You're going to help me. Yeah. It blew, blew me away. But then when I went to their house and saw how these guys lived, and there was like five of them living all in this apartment, <laughs> which you kind of have to do in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> but what blew me away was when I got there and I watched their lives. So I'm like, man, if these guys are fake, I'm going to see it now. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to watch their lives. And the thing that really impacted me the most was there's this young teenage boy that was living with them. Mm. His name was Dorian Peters. And uh, Dorian, his mom was a drug addict on the streets of Oakland. And she had come to church a few times, and she got to a position where a, a situation in her life where she could no longer take care of her teenage boy. And the only people that she knew that would love them were these brothers, these, these guys at the, the church, the guys that were staying with me. So she asked them if they would take over parenting her son. Wow. And so they did. They brought him into their home. They, I, I watched. They would sit down. They would, they would do the, uh, help him do his homework. They would guide him. They would mentor him. They would love him. They would feed him. They took care of everything. They worked as a team. These brothers who were just my age, right? And they're taking care of this kid. This kid went on. He, he graduated high school. Um, he, no, he no longer was living on the streets of Oakland, but he graduated high school. He went on to go to Vanderbilt University and he became a lawyer. All, all because of the love of the disciples. Wow. Yeah. And that showed me God. That showed me the love that God had for this young man. And I saw it through the disciples. Mm-hmm. Their willingness to lay down their lives for this guy. To take care of this guy. To not just teach him the word, but to help him through life. Wow. And to love him. Let's That's how we see God. Yeah. Come on, bro. You keep reading here. Let's go to verse 16. Come on, bro. That's awesome. Come it on. says, and so we know and we, we rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. 
because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. You know, it says here, we love because he first loved us. This is our, 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 our why. I appreciate Maya and the contribution. And she, uh, she said, what if you woke up tomorrow with only what you thank God for today? Yeah. Wow. That puts a little spin on being grateful. Yeah. Last week, you know, our lesson was entitled Just Mercy. Mm-hmm. And we talked all about the mercy of God. And when I, for my, in my life, and I think it's got to be, every one of us has got to look at what you're grateful for in your relationship with God and what he has specifically and personally done for you. Mm-hmm. But when I look at my life, I think about all of God's patience with me. I think about all of God's love. I think about how many times that God has saved me physically, emotionally. I think about the amazing wife that he's given me, yes. the amazing kids that I have, my health, my life, everything. Um, how can I not be grateful? And how can I not want, because of that gratitude, be an example of loving others? Amen. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, this is the motive. This is the why, because he first loved us. Mm-hmm. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to talk about what it really means to love. And really, my only point here is all you need is love. That's another song, I think, by the way. The Beatles. Um, And you'll find love is more than a feeling. I know what the world tells us. Love is a feeling, and... And it's like... And they say love is always going to be this, you know, this... Uh, right love is in the air that that love like it's like butterflies and you're always going to feel warm look man that is that is not reality okay let's go bro that's like the the the, the first mile of love in like millions of miles okay and those of us that are married you'll find out very quickly that love is sometimes the feelings and the emotions and the butterflies. And a lot of other times it's not. <laughs> and you got to learn to be loving the way the Bible says to be loving, okay? And the Bible here tells us what that is. All you need is love. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31. We'll start there, and then we'll go to chapter 13. In verse 31 it says, And now I will show you the most excellent way. So whenever he says that, Listen, again, like, I'm going to show you the most excellent way. This is it. If you want to know what never fails, it's right here. He says in verse 1, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I don't have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all the mysteries and knowledge And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and I give my over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I don't have love, I gain nothing. Man, here we learn that the most important characteristic of a disciple is not how much faith you have. Not how much knowledge you have or how talented of a speaker you are. He says here, you, you can speak like an angel. Like you can be so eloquent that it's like an angel up here speaking. He says you can have so much faith that you can move mountains. And he says you can, you can have literally all the answers of the universe. That's how smart you are. Like all mysteries, knowledge, like everything that people are still trying to find answers to mm-hmm. just go to Nate. He's got it. He, he knows the answer. He, he says, he says you can have all of that, but if you're an unloving person, you're nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, how important is love? It's more important than everything. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. He says it's the most excellent way. Yep. Let's keep reading here in verse four. He says, love is patient. (laughs) Sometimes you just just have to like sit and let it resonate for a minute. Love is patient. Love is kind. Yeah, come on. Love does not envy. 
Love does not boast. Love is not prideful. It does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. Love never fails. Man. Man. So this passage, it, it, it tells us what love really is. And it's so much more than a feeling. Like that Boston song from the 70s. He says, love, it's patient. You know, and, and this word here for being patient, it, it means to long suffer. It means that you're willing to put up with a lot. It means that you don't give up easily. It means you fight for people. You fight for your relationships. And you fight to persevere and to be patient. You know, last week we uh, read the scripture as we talked about being merciful people. We looked at Colossians 3.13 and that scripture said, make allowances for each other's faults. Yeah. And I, I thought, you know, an allowance, right? You put money aside to give someone, right? At the end of the week or you give to someone as needed. Mm-hmm. That's an allowance. He says here, make an allowance for someone's faults. So you think ahead and you know, okay, this person's going to hurt me at some point. But I'm going to make an allowance for that. I'm going to put it in my piggy bank of, like my, 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 my piggy bank of forgiveness over here. <laughs> and when they hurt me, I'm going to take it out, and I'm going to break it, and I'm going to give them all the forgiveness that I have stored up already for them. Mm-hmm. He says, make an allowance for each other's faults. <clears throat> Love is patient. Yeah. That is, that's hard to do. Yeah. Like the next, you get to, ex- like we've all prayed, God, make me a more loving person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he's not going to sprinkle love dust on you. He's not going to sprinkle patience. Like, like you're just going to wake up and like, oh, this is more loving. No, no. He's going to put you in a situation. Amen. You're like, God, make me a more loving person. Okay. That's a great prayer. I will. So, so, so he's going to put someone in your life that's going to hurt your feelings. And maybe you read the scripture that morning. And you're like, okay, be patient. Love is patient. And that's how you learn to be patient. Damn. Like, love hurts. That's another song, too. Yeah. <laughs> love, love hurts. Come on, bro. Um, he oh, says, he says, love is kind. So you're just a kind, you're kind. You're kind with your words. You want to encourage versus tearing someone down. Yeah. Yeah. You want to build up versus tear down. Yeah. Love is expressive with your words. He says, love doesn't envy. So envy has to do with comparing yourself to others. And then you get angry. So you, don't, you can't enjoy the success of others. Mm-hmm. So love is, is the opposite. Love is when people are lifted up, you're fired up. You're not comparing yourself to them. Well, why wasn't I lifted up? Come on, bro. Why, are they, why are they so special? <laughs> Sheesh, why did he get to speak to them? Yeah. No, love is like, you're, just, you're the first one. Like, oh, yeah, man. Uh, you're, 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 you're applauding the successes of others. Yeah, Come on, bro. bro. He says, love does not boast. Boasting has to do with verbally expressing to others how awesome you are. Uh, That's what what boasting is. Like, I'm going to tell you how awesome I am. He says, God's like, that's not loving. Loving is telling other people how awesome they are. That is loving. He says, love is not proud. Can I tell you guys a story? Okay. Yeah, come on. My first year of marriage, we just celebrated 19 years of marriage. Let's go, Julie! Let's go! Don't you know, tell this um, story, bro. She's saying don't tell it. No, she wants me to tell it. Because it's my sin that's in this story. Right? <laughs> Those ones are okay to tell. Okay, so our first year, and I, I kid you not, this is like the first couple weeks of marriage, right? Like when the, when the, when the lovey doveys and the feelings and the honeymoon just got over, but you're, you're like, this is like our first fight. Okay. That we had. And real quickly, the feelings, all stuff dissipated. <laughs> and I remember, I didn't know what the fight was. It's something really small, which most fights, right. Are, are like small, like issues. You don't even remember, right. It's just our pride. Like two Rams are clashing. And I remember we were in one of these moments and I was totally leading, you know, I was totally leading in humility, not. I was sitting on the couch, right? And we were in a fight, don't remember what it was about. And she gets up 
right? And I'm just being obstinate and stubborn. She gets up and she leaves the, the living room and she goes to the bedroom. And I'm thinking, okay, she'll be back soon. She'll go, she'll pray, she'll humble out and she'll come back and she'll apologize to me. That's literally what I thought. I'm just sitting there in my stubbornness waiting for Julie to come apologize. And I hear the door open of our bedroom. I'm like, oh, here she comes. <laughs> I'm ready. I gear up for this apology. And I look, and she's carrying two bags. Oh. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? I'm going to L.A., right? And I'm sitting there like, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Man. I apologize. I got humble real quick. <laughs> Love is not proud. I wasn't loving my wife. I was so prideful. Unwilling to apologize. Just to say, I'm, I'm sorry. He says, love is not self-seeking. That's it. I thought about this one for me. Love is not selfish. Love is not self-seeking. One thing that I think we do is we want to love people in the way, ways we feel comfortable with. Oh, yeah. Like, like, I'll give you another example from my life. I want to be able to communicate I love Julie in the ways that I want to communicate my love and have her just be fine with that. Right? Like, I want to communicate, okay, if I take out the, di- if I take, take out the dishes, if I take out the garbage and I do all the dishes, then that should be sufficient, right? That's loving, right? Yeah. I think so. And that is loving, and she, and she appreciates that. But she also wants me to express my love with words of encouragement. Now that one's not as easy for me. <laughs> and in my selfishness, I want, I want to be like, well, no, no, doing dishes is enough. You should be okay with that. I don't want to have to express it. Yet the Bible says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. And so I, I've had to learn to love in ways that it's, it, it's not comfortable. Like, love people the way they... That's why we have this book called The Five Love Languages. Yep, yeah. L- like, love people in a way that, that they feel loved, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and to be loving is to find out what makes you feel loved. How do I care about you? Like, mm-hmm. like how do I meet those needs? Amen? Amen. Yes. Love is not easily angered. It says it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. If you want the, the, the solution to never failing... He says, love is it. It's the most excellent way. Let's let's go to our final passage, Luke chapter 10. And now we're going to look at this kind of love, the patient love, the the forgiving love, the not keeping a record of wrongs love. We're going to look at this love in action in the scripture, in a parable that Jesus tells. Luke 10, 25. Give me an amen when you get there. Amen, bro. Okay. I love this story. Verse 25, we'll, we'll back up a little bit from the parable and we'll get a running start at this passage. In verse 25, it says, on one occasion, an expert in the law. So this was the religious guy of the day. This is like a pastor, right? He says, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. That's not a good thing. Teacher, he asked, well, what, must, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, well, well, who's my neighbor? Okay, so Jesus says, Love, your, love God with all your heart and love people. Love your neighbor mm-hmm. as you love yourself. And it says he wanted to justify himself. So he's like, okay, so who's my neighbor then? And I think there's probably some people he didn't want to love. Mm-hmm. He's essentially asking, so I have to love everybody? Or can I choose the people that I offer my love to? Mm-hmm. Can I just love the people that love me back? Can I just love the people that are kind to me? All the people that have hurt me, they're not going to be in my love department. Wow. I'm not going to love them. Wow. No, Jesus is like, he's like, like, well, who's my neighbor? Maybe hoping that Jesus would say, well, your neighbor is, is this group of people, but not everybody. Mm. So look at how Jesus answers the question. Oh, no. Come on. 
Jesus is like, let me tell you a story. In, in reply, Jesus says to this guy, a man was going down to Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw this man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the, other, where the man was. And when he saw the man, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, and he gave them to the innkeeper and said, Look after him, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. <laughs> Jesus says, now you go and do likewise. Wow. <laughs> you know, in this story, th- he tells the story of a, of a Jewish man that had been beaten up and left for dead, and he's laying on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And the first two people that walk by and see this guy laying there dead is two religious people. Right. Yeah. A Pharisee and a Levite. The Pharisee was like your modern, modern day minister the Levite was those in charge of all the worship. So literally you have the pastor and the worship leader of a, of a, of a mainstream church today. And they're walking down the road and they see one of their own countrymen, a fellow Jew, who's been beaten up and he's laying there half dead and they could save him. And they see him and they're like, whoa, I didn't see that. And they walk to the other side of the road. And they pretend like they didn't see anything. They purposely avoid him. They walk to the other side. But then Jesus says, but a Samaritan. Now you have to understand, right, the culture, right? A Samaritan was looked at in their time. And that a Samaritan was someone that was a half Jew, mm-hmm. right, and half Gentile. Mm-hmm. And Jews, they hated Samaritans. They actually called Samaritan people dogs. Mm-hmm. That's how they viewed these, this group of people, which is sad. Mm-hmm. So... You have a Samaritan who's walking down the street. He sees a Jew. Literally the last guy that you would expect to help. And it says that he took this Jew, put, this Jewish guy puts him up on his horse, takes care of him, goes the extra mile, takes him to an inn, pays for everything. Mm. Not caring what people think, but he's going to go out of his way to help someone that represented all the racism that he was showed, Mm -hmm. all the pain that he had probably experienced in his life, feeling like an outcast, feeling like he wasn't accepted. The one person that represented that, he's like, I'm going to love him. Mm. I'm going to take care of this guy. I'm going to put him on my horse. I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to come back to make sure he's okay. I'm going to do everything I can. And Jesus says, that's your neighbor. Mm. That's your neighbor. The person that represents... The, the one that's hurt you the most. The, the one that maybe you, you could have a reason to not help. Mm-hmm. He, said, he said, that's your neighbor. Wow. Our neighbor is everybody. Our neighbor for us is not just the people that love us back. It's the people that, 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 that may never accept us. It's, it's those that have hurt us time and time again. It's those that will hurt us tomorrow. It, it, it's, it's literally everyone is our neighbor's. And we got to offer the same kind of love that this guy showed this Jewish man. What's the application for us? Go the extra mile for everyone. Mm -hmm. Don't treat others as they deserve, but as God has treated you with patience, with care and consideration. Mm -hmm. What the world needs most right now is love. They need to watch. They need to look at the lives of disciples and see this scripture in action. Where you go the extra mile for people where you love people. And that's my challenge for us. As we looked at these scriptures that give us an example of love, God is love. And you look at the story of this good Samaritan, the challenge for us is to go and do likewise. Just like he told that religious guy, we're, we're not here just to be religious people that don't love people. Yeah. That just go to church on Sunday in our selfish little bubble and listen to a sermon mm. and go home and have no interaction. No, we got to go and do likewise. We actually got to love people. That's what I love about our church. Mm. Yeah, that, that we're, we're a church 
that, that is together. We're a family. You've probably gotten like 15 hugs today. <laughs> but it goes beyond the hugs. We're actually in each other's lives. We yeah. actually love each yeah. other. Yeah. We actually want to leave an impact on this city. Yeah. And the way to do it isn't by all of our vast amounts of knowledge and all of our faith, although we need faith and we need knowledge. Yep. But the way you're going to do it, what makes all of that work mm. is love. Yeah, come on, bro. I want to call us to be patient when you want to be frustrated and give up. To be kind when you want to be rude. And to encourage instead of tear down. But more than anything, to bring the good news and bring healing to the walking dead with love. To God be the glory.